What is going on, everybody? Welcome in to the North End Podcast, Episode 3. Uh, my name is Zach Graham, and I'm living on cloud nine right now, alongside my co-host, uh, Ian Michaud, Big Horsey. How you doing, man? Uh, long weekend? Fun weekend? How are you feeling? Sunday evening now, after the Friday night win? What's going I on? I feel fantastic now that I have recovered. <laughs> a full 24 hours of recovery. Yeah. Feel great. Voice a little shaky, maybe? Still? <laughs> Voice a little shaky still. I think that might be a, a recurring theme on the sure. pod is that uh, you're gonna get raspy. <laughs> Ian. Uh, hey, I, I, I'm definitely not doing myself a lot of favors outside of uh, the screaming at the game, <laughs> uh, but uh, sure. yeah, we might be having to roll with that. I also have uh, a lot on cloud nine with you now, and uh, yeah. happy to be neighbors up there. Yeah. After, I mean, what this is this is the largest sporting event in the history of Austin city of Austin. Was this the biggest well, professionally? Right. I mean, you forget yeah. about you. Yeah, yeah. Right? Professionally. Um, yeah, but yeah, no, hands down. Um, and there was a lot of things I think on the ESPN broadcast that were said that were maybe not so correct or maybe leaning in the direction of our opponents. But uh, one thing they did say multiple times is, you know, it's the biggest, it was the biggest game in club history. And I think everybody, would agree with that. Um, but we are we are joined today. We promised last time we teased that we would have our first guest. And it's not just a guest. It is plural. We have our two good buddies from Section 123, who I have dubbed the Section 123 captains. It's Brian and Mike, a.k.a. Verdes Locos and Stone yeah. Hens on Twitter. That's we'll get to that stuff later. I just want to bring our buddies in here. We'll start with Brian. Brian, how you doing, my friend, on this wonderful weekend, wrapping it up here Sunday evening? Yeah, man, I'm doing, as you can hear, there you I'm, go. I'm still recovering, <laughs> uh, sounding like Ian sounded a couple episodes ago, but uh, <laughs> yeah, feeling good. I mean, nothing takes the elation of Friday night away. Um, yep. I I had predicted some, I'll, I'll get into it more later, I predicted a, a win, but I did not predict that. I yeah. No, I, I did I'm not sure. predict that. I'm not sure anybody could have predicted, at least on, on our side, right? Uh, so, Mike, how you doing, man? How, how's your voice doing? Because obviously yeah, us still are struggling. Yeah, I'm still struggling, too. You know, we're all going to struggle. Like, you called us the captain, so you know we're the loudest ones there. So. Yep. <laughs> hey, there's, hey, there's no doubt about that, man. Uh, right. And, and I, I, I think I've mentioned this to you guys before, but, uh, you know, last season, um, I think maybe we, like, kind of some passing – glances at each other like what's going on you know whatever but we really weren't we didn't really connect until this season but I think Ian can attest to and I I don't know e, if you, you you I know you don't remember everything that goes on in the stadium during the 90 minutes uh, every game it's all right but, I don't the same way <laughs> yeah yeah but but and and when you're when you're as intense as as the group of us are up there in the north end uh you're gonna miss some things but I I remember vividly seeing Brian uh, you know, with with the vest, with the the green hair, the facial look there, it is. Right there uh, and saying to you, we need to know that guy. So the fact that we're sitting here now in the middle of this fantastic season with not just Brian but Mike too uh, is is just kind of awesome. Like a, a little bit of a full circle thing, I think, for us. But before we jump into the LAFC recap, because obviously anybody that's tuned into this. You're also a fan of our favorite team. You also watched what unfolded at Q2 Stadium on Friday night, the 4-1 Austin win. We'll get into that, but uh, I wanted to throw it to, to our guests here to kind of tell us a little bit about themselves, maybe where they grew up, what they do, their other hobbies outside of Austin FC, because obviously we all know that we spend a lot of time cheering on our favorite team, but uh, just to get to know you guys a little bit better, to let the the Austin FC community know, because again, like we've said on this pod, is this one of our goals is to to kind of connect people in our community, like so many other outlets, uh, you know, around Austin FC do. Uh, yeah. So I guess I'll throw it to you first, Mike. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, I guess. Uh, you know, how long have you been in Austin, et cetera? Like, let me yeah. know what's going on. Yeah, for sure. So actually, you can follow me at uh, on Twitter at Verdes Locos. Just get mm -hmm. that out there. Follow me on Twitter. Uh, quick update, LA just scored against New England, just so you all know. Watching Galaxy, right? right? Galaxy yeah. and the yeah, Revolution. They just scored. Yeah, they just scored. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, get back to a little bit about myself. Um, just so I can touch on this, Brian and I are brothers. 
Uh, we both grew up in Dallas. Uh, nice. Actually moved up to New York for about uh, 10 years. Hey, uh, okay. Yeah, I lived there for 10 years. But I've actually lived here in Austin for almost nine years. Be Going on 10 years next year, I'll be here in Austin. Nice. Um, yeah, growing up, I played soccer for eight years, so that's why I'm a huge soccer fan, huge soccer head. I know the rules, know everything that's going on, so it's easy to follow for me. Beautiful. Uh, that's awesome, man. Right. Uh, I mean, I think, first of all, once you're – You've already got your Austinite card, right? I think usually right. what they do is, you know, it's like a 10-year trial period. But but what you have exhibited around this club, in the stands, et cetera, uh, I think they expedited your your uh, Austinite card there. <laughs> really, it would, be, it would be nice. It would be nice if the club could do similar things for the, the visas for the players that we sign. Yeah. Uh, you know, expedite those a little bit more. But you mentioned you lived up in New York. What part? Because, you know, Ian is from New York. Oh, no, I didn't even know that. Yeah, no, I lived in Syracuse. Brian and I both lived in Syracuse. Oh, snap. Yeah. yeah. It snows out there. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's yeah. why I left before he did. Yep. <laughs> that is a whole nother planet. Yeah, I know. Oh, that's what God. that's what brought me back was the snow. It was snowing on Mother's Day the last year I was there, and I was like, peace out, guys. I'll see y'all later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, so, so, Brian. Yeah. Mike said you guys you grew up in the Dallas area. Um Thankfully, how did you avoid becoming a Frisco fan? <laughs> well, I was so, to begin with. I saw him play in the Cotton Bowl, but yeah, okay, okay. Well, we, we both like remember Dallas Burn. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Both remember the rebranding. Um, yeah, was happy for him with the rebranding because Burn were <laughs> really weird. Sure, but um, yeah, the, the the Dallas Metroplex area is not too focused on soccer as a professional sport. They have their major teams. Yeah. So, you know, even when Dallas played in Dallas, um, they played to mostly empty fans uh, or Mm -hmm. empty seats. Um, And they didn't really put a lot of effort towards the fans like I think Austin does. Sure. Um, And so I think it's suffered. It's made them suffer, you know. There's a reason that they've been in the league since the inception but have not won a championship, you know. Yeah, I mean, I think in you talking about the fans, I, I don't think much has changed. You know, I, I kid Dallas fans. I kid. They, 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 <laughs> they are. Uh, they're certainly doing doing more, from what I can tell. Uh, them and Houston. You know, we'll give both of those clubs plenty of shit. Uh, you know, we have in the past, and we will in the future. Uh, but when it comes to that, I think, I think a lot of Austin fans can agree that like, it's going to be more fun. Or it would be more fun if all of us were more on the if those teams came you know rose to our level in terms yeah. of the engagement uh, you know with the fan base to the club and the popularity of the club. Uh, yeah, and I have to say, like, give it up to our supporters and fans. Um, yeah, because when we do travel, like their supporters know that we're we're coming in force and, and in mass, um, so they try to show out as much as they can. <laughs> um, so. You know, kudos to our supporters for driving that, and and hopefully, yeah, like you said, man, hopefully soon it becomes mm-hmm. something that that we all can gather around and have rivalries and still be friends, and you know, exactly, exactly. Um, and I guess to, to that point, with the LAFC uh, fans that came in, there were a good number of them. Uh, yeah, they it's, showed up for sure. Yeah, it they seemed up. like. When everybody went over to Hop Squad after the game, I, I saw a lot of pictures of, of some some LAFC, some some what is it three two five two fans out mm-hmm. there, right, uh, having a good time. And I think that hospitality it seems like it's shown most places around the league, um, and that's something that, as you know, more of a new MLS fan myself, that I, I think is really really cool. Before we get into that recap, the last thing I thought was really funny that we found out two months ago or something. That Brian and Ian are actually coworkers. <laughs> so I guess Ian, tell tell us how you uh, you and Brian discovered that that fact. So I believe it was the day after the San Antonio game. Oh God! <clears throat> and we saw you there, <laughs> and uh, that was that had to be a very short amount of time from when we made our initial face to face kind of introduction, like. Mm-hmm. Hey, we're not just the other people yelling around here. You know, we also have names and did all that. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm we're, I'm logging in for a company wide meeting, mm-hmm. and uh, it's a Zoom call, 
and the little like avatar pops up of this dude and he's rocking this very well-known vest that i've seen yeah. <laughs> over and over and he's got the green hair and everything and i'm like i text you real quick hey do you know that guy's name who who's in the section yeah. with us? like do you know his name? <laughs> or his last name i was like yeah. do you know his last name i think i think yeah. he works with me man you were i think working uh, so you didn't get back to me very promptly. So I, I jumped on LinkedIn and I'm looking for, cause I caught your last name there and I'm jumped on LinkedIn. And I'm, I'm like, that's him, man. <laughs> Quick slack. And uh, yeah. And then it turned out not only, uh, you know, do we currently work together? Um, <clears throat> we were at a startup uh, uh, before that together <laughs> in a much more intimate setting um and i mean i don't know we had to have crossed paths at some yeah. point in Small that world. Place. yeah, yeah. Um, i mean it's 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 all culminating here right the fact that yeah all, right. of, the, all of those uh, like missed connections for lack of a better term right there working together uh living in similar areas and now here the first appearance on the north end podcast after what again i think is our biggest win in club history uh certainly in terms of the opponent and how uh how things unfolded on the pitch so let's go ahead and jump in to that 4-1 victory against lafc um i really think that there wasn't a ton uh really in the first like 30 minutes or so of the match that was notable um right because you, you a lot of things happen kind of fast and furious between 30th minute and like the 70th yeah. but one thing that stuck out to me early on watching the replay of the game is that, and I think we felt this in the stadium as well, I thought LAFC was making a point to be very physical with Drew uh, mm -hmm. 16th minute, you see Hall, Ryan Hollingshead uh, run kind of through his back in the box and shouts for a penalty. Um, I, I believe they did go and check it, and no penalty was awarded. Um, I did catch Coach Wolf. Uh, on the broadcast, on the replay, saying that to the to the fourth official, you could read his lips. He said, "Yeah, but if it's a foul, it's a foul." Like he, he was given some right. kind of explanation. So, I thought on the replay it could have been a penalty. Um, I don't know if you guys uh, saw that replay, but or any thoughts there? I mean, I think obviously we're all biased in favor of the Verde and Black, but any thoughts there? Maybe Mike, like as a, a soccer veteran yourself, as a player, like was that too soft to be called a penalty or what did you think? I think in that position, the ref had bad positioning. That's what I think. Okay. Um, to me, that ref did lose control of the game and it just seemed like he didn't have it from the beginning, which caused a lot of what happened. But from what I remember, he, uh, what I saw, the ref was out of position quite a bit to be able to call any foul given the fouls that he should have been calling. But yes, if it was in the box and they, they, it was a foul, it should have been a penalty. That's my big thing. So, Do we well, know so for sure that they checked it? They Agreed. did. I, they yeah, had I watched the their pause. Them. They did? Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I haven't watched you know, the replay I, yet all the way through. So, It's a foul. It was, yeah, I, I thought. And again, I think the fact that the fourth official said something to coach where he's like, well, okay, if it's a foul, it doesn't matter where it is. On yeah, the exactly. Field. Yeah. Right. Um, at least, you know, if you're just going by the letter of the just law. Just like a handball is a handball. It doesn't matter where it's at. If it's in the box, <laughs> exactly. it's a penalty. Exactly. Um, and so then I think, in in my opinion, uh, a much more egregious uh, foul on Eddie Segura in the 30th minute. Uh, Drew Yusey gets a chance kind of on the left side uh, of the box and takes a touch or two towards his right and looks like he's going to get past Murillo um, and, and kind of square up for a, a chance. And Eddie Segura leaves his feet and makes contact, uh, his forearm to Driussi's chin. Uh, and and Driussi goes down in a heap, uh, immediate yellow card. They also check this for a red, no yeah. red given. Um, I will shout out my buddy, uh, Ant Separulo, who's a Philadelphia Union fan, lives up there in Pennsylvania. He was watching the game, and he texted me right after that foul happened, and he said, that's a red. And so I felt, I felt more justified in the stadium that a third party yeah. took time out of his – Friday evening to say, dude, that's a red. Like, yeah. uh, Brian, I know I, I saw you in that moment, furious, just like me and Ian were a couple rows behind you. How did you feel about that? Have you seen the replay? How how can that be? I, I, I know they can give additional discipline, I believe, after, after yeah. the match is over. Do you think there's a chance that that's coming for Zagura? Um, I, I don't. 
Um, mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to happen. Um, I, little known fact, I'm an actually certified referee. Uh, so oh, sorry. boy. Okay. So now. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. we're getting into it. Yeah. So that, uh, any of the calls, uh, and we'll, we'll probably get into the scuffle here in a few minutes. Yes. <laughs> oh, we'll, yeah, we're going to get into the scuffle. Yeah. Um, that absolutely pissed me off the most. And sorry if there's any young ones listening, but. Um, we mark it as explicit. I was right. Sure we, we, we mark it. it. Good. I'm going to keep it as PG as I can, yeah. Right. Um, so there's multiple reasons, right? So first of all, I I even have, like, told people who I've chatted with about it, if I were that referee in that moment, when that happened, I would have done the exact same thing. It's a yellow card immediately. Mm -hmm. Where I think that they missed it was Atlanta who said, oh. no, you do not need to go take another look at this. Um, you did exactly what was right. That's, mm -hmm. to me, that's where they missed it. Because oh, yeah. Atlanta has control of like, hey, you you called the foul great, but you need to go take another look at this because you might have you might have called it too lightly. Right. Um, and I think the ref all night, he made it a point that he was, he was, he was going to make them play. He wasn't calling light calls. And we saw mm -hmm. that from the first example you gave when Hollings had ran through yeah. um, Drew Ucy. Just a week mm -hmm. before, Ethan Finley was called in the box for something much less than that. Yeah. Um, so that, like, and that's the thing about each individual ref, they're going to call it, indivi like, they're going to call it how they call the game. And every player knows that they have to adjust their game to how that ref calls the game. Sure. Um, and likewise, coming from a ref's perspective, every ref knows who the key players on the field are and who they need to keep an eye on and who they need to protect and who they need to, um, you know, there, there's sheets and, and um, pre, you know, uh, uh, pre-game scouting or pre-game pre strategy and right. yeah, scouting yeah. reports that the refs get just right. like the teams. Their points of emphasis and things like that. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. And, given the given the the physicality against Drew Easy early. Yeah. yeah. And that's what I was saying is like And I'm cool with that. that he that. made it a point that I'm not giving any favors. I'm not doing anybody any favors. I mean there was things that even Gareth Bell was hoping for Chicho was was hoping for mm -hmm. these little petty calls. Nobody was getting petty calls all night, mm -hmm. um, yep. and he made that point from the beginning, which I understood. So, like like I said, in the moment, the uh, Drew Ucy foul, um, it it in the moment he did exactly what I would have done. Um, I think Atlanta uh, failed us. I think it right. Made, and I'm fine with that to give the yeah. give the yellow fit fast. Clearly, obviously, it's a card, mm -hmm. um, and the you know the implications of sending somebody off yeah. are huge, yeah. and it's not something to be taken lightly. I don't want the guy to be out here just throwing red cards, but exactly. I mean, if the first one got reviewed, so we have confirmation that the first one on Seba was reviewed. This one was not. Well, it, it might have been reviewed. They just did not ask him to go. Okay, they did not. They did so, not say. Okay. So yeah, say. kind of how the steps have to work is that the the call on the field is made or not made, whatever it might be, and Atlanta looks at it almost immediately, starts looking at it immediately. Okay. And then they don't get to make the choice of like this should be this or this should be a red card or a yellow card. They only get to make the choice of like, hey you might have missed a call center referee. You need to go to the monitor and take a look at it. And it's still up to the center referee even after he looks at it. So even if they would have told him, hey, go look at it, there's very likely chance he would have said, no, it's still just a yellow card. Um, yeah. But the fact that they didn't even give him the option, like the dude left his feet. The dude went straight for somebody's head with an elbow. That's a wrestling yeah. move. Like, <laughs> yeah, it was not. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree. Violent so, should not be allowed, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, Segura uh, stays in with the yellow and uh, things calm down for the moment. Uh, again, this foul took place just outside of the penalty area. Um, and we line up, uh, I believe, Drew Yussi, Diego Fagundes is over the ball, and Danny Pereira is standing slightly behind them to the right. 
Um, and it ends up being Diego taking the shot and buries it. Uh, his second in three or four home games. He obviously yeah, his other three Houston, take goal did against that. Houston. Yeah. Um, and so he's the he's o- the only player still uh, in Austin FC's history to hit uh, or co- to convert a free kick goal. Um, Ian, when this went through, uh, I, I just I, we have your celebration on video. It, it involved standing up on your chair, uh, taking your shirt off towards the LAFC fans who are <laughs> nice. sitting up t- towards our left. Uh, it was just the beginning of a rowdy night. So I mean, is obviously Drewusi is the most special player, not just on our team, but we think in the league. But do you think going forward that Diego Fagundes is the one that should take all those direct kicks? I don't know if I would say all, but uh, that's nice to have in the pocket there. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's just been stellar. I mean, he was fantastic this entire match. Um, Mm -hmm. What a shot. And obviously I'm more than comfortable with him taking those, but if Seba wants to step up and, you know, crunch time kind of situation, he, he wants to, you know, earn those stripes for the golden boot, then let's go for it. I'm fine with that. Uh, good problem yeah. to have. Yeah, I mean, it's a, oh, sorry. No, go ahead, Brian. Uh, I was just going to say, I don't know if you guys noticed it, because um, anytime some like a, a set play like that happens, I get in my chair, I, I hold up my glass of water, I'm getting ready because I'm, I'm calling it. it. Like, I'm already, <laughs> yep, like, already this know. is happening. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, so Drew was down for a while. He was getting some attention from the medical team staff. Um, and meanwhile, Diego is like getting there, setting up the ball and doing his thing. And then like, you know, the, the medical team clears and blah, blah, blah. And I don't think Diego was paying attention, but he like, after he completely has it set up, he stands up and he turns around and Drew is right behind him. It's almost <laughs> as if like, he's like, you can take the shot. <laughs> and so they yeah. had like a little discussion. It was really <laughs> funny to just like see them there for that second. But um, yeah. Yeah, it was a it was an amazing shot. What were you gonna say? No, I was just gonna say, I mean, the 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 fact that you can line both of those guys up back there and I can't imagine being an opposing keeper with Diego Fagundes and Sebastian Driussi. Like who is gonna whoever's coming at me, it's not gonna be an easy save, most likely. Yep. Um yeah. So, Although I'm going to yeah, take I mean, credit that... for that goal. I'm going to take credit for that goal. Uh, <laughs> Brian and I have this superstition. I'm a little superstitious. And anytime I say I'm going to go get a beer, it seems that we've <laughs> scored. Every time I'm like, I'll see you. I'll be in bed right back, brother. I'm going to go get a beer. <laughs> I went up. Drewsy gets fouled. I come back and I see Diego score. So, I mean, I take credit. <laughs> a little bit of credit for that goal. Hey, and that's that's funny because uh, I always tell Ian that we score when he goes to the bathroom in the middle of the half. So maybe next time you go get a beer, I'm going to send Ian's ass with you up to go to the bathroom. <laughs> we'll do that. And yeah. Maybe we'll score two. Yeah. We'll score two goals at once. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, obviously, every you know, stadium goes nuts. Uh, oh, I think it, it was lit after that. Oh, man. You and I oh, turn to each God. other e and say, uh, "Hey, we." We scored first. We're first, baby. What team is this? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, but then the the chaos that comes after that, uh, obviously the 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 dust up, the fight, the scuffle, whatever you want to say. Um, it, what was I think overshadowed by the craziness that unfolded was that the the pass that led to that shove by Mario shoved Maxi Aruti kind of into the mm-hmm. oh, into the stands. Uh, yeah. Rusi, that. That was a Rabona pass with like some side spin on it that kept it in bounds for longer than it should have. He's just like just he is. Drew's is a man, man. Drew's he's, he's just, just it's incredible. Yeah. yeah. But so uh, you know, anybody who was at the game obviously saw it, uh, kind of raised, I think, everybody's blood pressure in the building. Uh certainly I probably anybody watching at home on their couch as well. Um Maxi Rudy gets shoved by uh Mario into the stands. Arudi comes and retaliation is maybe a sh- too strong of a term because it looked like he kind of maybe like maybe stepped this, on his foot or like kicked him in the ankle a little bit. This but man Mario, fell before he even got touched. Mario goes down like he got like, like, an angle like, like I tweeted out like he stepped on a man. Like I thought he stepped on a man. I don't know what that <laughs> yeah. happened. The way he... And then and so of course Maxi walks away. Is you know get up. That turned Maxie, him up though. Yeah, oh, Maxine Craco, the keeper, he comes out, bodies Aruti, Aruti keeps walking away, Diego flies in. Yeah. It, 
he's so little. He just kind of bounces off Cray Poe. Then he gets <laughs> shoved in. And all of a sudden, the entire, you know, almost all 22 players are over there. There was one notable absence from that scrum. And he was there about was. 50 yards away on the other side of the field. Mm. And that was Gareth Bale. And I think, uh, not to get ahead of ourselves here, but I think the overarching theme for me between these two teams, who are the two powerhouses right now in the Western Conference, is that that individual type of attitude that maybe isn't displayed at all times by some of these high-profile LAFC players, it just showed to me, like, you don't want a guy like that not bought in in the playoffs. I don't care what sport it is, what level. If there's a guy who's not not willing to go get in a dust up, you nobody's throwing punches out right. here. Nobody's. It's not a real fight. But you got to go over there and stand up for your guys. And the fact that he made no effort, it made me feel more confident against this team because if you can't play Gareth Bale, obviously they're a lesser team. They have lost some very good players in this transfer window to bring in some of these bigger names. True. And very true. I, they're thank you. They have not been playing well as of late. Mm -hmm. Oh, I mean, they lost to San Jose. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And and barely. I mean, they they only they won they one DC game. By DC. Wood. Yeah, yeah. That's At home similar. too. So like, yeah. you, and we know how tough it is to win there. Uh, we're the only team that can do it so far this season. <laughs> uh, Mike, I guess first I wanted to ask you, uh, what did you think about that entire situation? Was it, I mean, the shove, right, to Aruti? I saw, uh, I think it was uh, Matt Doyle from the Extra Time podcast today said that he thought it was a clean play, shoulder to shoulder, that the ball was still in bounds. I thought it was a pretty advantageous use of the screenshot rather than the full replay. How did right. you feel about how that whole thing played out? Yeah, I think Murillo went for the body. He didn't, he, he, he could have eased up. He was playing the body, he wasn't playing the ball. That's where the foul should have been called. That's where the foul should have been called to me on that play. I mean, if you're going to – I mean, yes, it would have been a soft foul to call, and the ref wasn't calling those soft fouls all game. Mm -hmm. So I didn't expect him to call that, but if you were going to call a foul, that would have been the foul to call. Mm -hmm. um, but then I think that's when the ref lost control of that game right there. But like we already touched on, I think that that's what woke Maxi up because following that, yeah. Maxi went off. So, <laughs> Yeah, and, and the thing is, too, is like all of his – decisions to be indecisive or to let small things go mm -hmm. i think boiled to this like this yeah. could have been preventable and it's all up to the center referee um to to tell people like you don't get away with that like there's there's gonna be things that you do not get to get away with um i mean even before this i don't know if you guys saw it in the replay uh gareth bell he tried to toss John Gallagher around on when a ball went out. I did see that before, yep. before throw in and everybody was asking for, you know, some kind of decision there too. Um, and I even remember turning to Mike when this ball was being played and both your Rudy and, and um, uh, Maria were going after it. Mm -hmm. There was a moment where uh, Rudy just, let up like he he stopped he knew that he wasn't getting to this ball and I turned to Mike and I was like oh he he gave up he's not getting to this ball and that's when Mario just went into him and it was just like that's the problem there like mm -hmm. one guy says he's given up the other guy's like all right well then I'm gonna just take you out completely like but but why <laughs> why do you yeah need you're gonna win the you're I'm giving you the ball you're gonna win the throw in but you need to feel like you need to make it more um, yeah. Sentence were so, high. Yeah, and you know, I, I don't blame Maxi for doing what he did. Um, yeah, no, good for him. Yeah, and I think in that moment, the ref delivered the right amount of yellows to the right people, and you know, that's also where the fourth and and Atlantic get involved in the fact uh -huh. like, who deserves what. This is what was going on. But, did Chicho get a yellow on that? No, Real quick, he should, he should have gotten a yellow because yeah. he's the one that came in and like shoved Fagundes. I don't know if anybody's seen that, but he really shoved Fagundes real hard. Yeah. It's escalation, right? Right, and right. Supposed to be discipline. So I, that was going to be my question to you, Brian. It was Aruti, Fagundes, and then Craig Poe uh, all receiving yellows there. Yeah. Um, I, I also thought that, I mean, obviously the Murillo, the initial, what we thought was a foul was not called a foul. And then I also thought he could have been booked for flopping when Aruti, you know, oh, yeah. barely yeah. touched him. Yeah, um, and that would have been that would have been pretty harsh. But the, just the fact that 
I think he kind of started the whole thing and then, you know, flops to go down and causes everybody to run over. I, I don't know. He ended up picking up a yellow later, but we'll get there. Uh, right before the half, you, Mike, you mentioned Max Rudy. That kind of it woke him up a little bit. Uh, I think it was 45th minute. Uh, nice pass from Diego over one to the pass. right side of the penalty area. Uh, Maxi has one. Barely misses, but I think, you know, his juices were flowing then. Uh, we get into the second half, and it does not take hardly any time at all for the Verde and Black to just blow the roof off of Q2. 47th minute, Maxi Ruti's goal. Um, comes from a, a, a free kick, a set piece into the box. Uh, gets uh, poorly cleared to just outside the 18. Nick Lima gets onto it. Uh, takes a touch. Not Another dissimilar. Yep. Yeah. He did, yeah, it right. he did it right this time. <laughs> yeah. 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 And no, you know, no, uh, no sliding defender with his arm up to, to yeah. bail him out with the handball, but delivers the ball to the near post. Maxi Aruti, who uh, after the fact, and you see Maxi, he, he uh, takes a, a beautiful glancing touch off the head to, to kind of nestle it into the, the back corner of the net to nil. And he immediately runs over to the coaching staff. Then I heard Coach Wolf talking after the game saying, you know, Max, he's been putting in a lot of work with the, the staff, working on his, his uh, you know, the aerial game and aerial finishing. And uh, it, it made me think, I don't know if I've ever seen him, like, connect on a ball in the air. I may, I may be blanking on a really obvious one, but, like, Ian, do you remember him ever? I, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm mistaken here, but it's, that's really not his game, so it surprised me. Yeah, there was the San Jose game he did the half volley. Uh, that's was, that's right that's right uh, but one from julio but not yeah here, no. right he's he's rarely i don't think he's ever oh, buried a goal it really uh, uh, even attempts a header in front of the net um yeah he jumped on that coach and he said hey did you hear that dumbass on the north <laughs> end who told me to lose my minutes <laughs> <laughs> What's that, you mean? oh yeah Man, <laughs> shut me up bro i'm all for it like like we touched on he uh that that put a fire in him. He was he was all about business. Uh, I mean, he goes back to back. That second or his second goal, just a masterclass on using his body, uh, determining where the ball is going to end up before even having to touch. Like just absolutely fantastic. Um, he was so decisive there as well. And I, yeah, it shut me up, Maxi. All, all for it. Yeah. I was going to say. One thing I think I've come to the realization over the weekend, because it reminded me too of uh, the July 4th game, was I like Maxi when he's mad. Like yeah. I want, I want Maxi playing upset and mad because if you think back to July 4th when they took that Colorado goal away from him, saying that he was it was a handball, he comes back three minutes later with a goal and he's like, "What now? What yeah. now? Yep. Yeah, <laughs> call that a handball? Yeah." <laughs> so like give me Maxi mad. Like before Maxi walks on the on the pitch, somebody needs to give him a couple slaps, yeah, yeah. him off a little bit, and then yeah. we're good to go. <laughs> a couple sound bites from the north end. Yeah, yep. so <laughs> it takes all of four more minutes for Maxi Rudy to windmill slam home the brace. Beautiful pass from Diego Fagundes that I think a lot of people, uh, certainly from the broadcast angle. I was surprised watching the replay that Hollingshead and I think Segura was the other one back there at the time that they both missed on, on kind of clearing this ball out, but it's, it sneaks through Maxi gets on the end of it. Uh, go, takes one touch around Craig post slots at home, right. Almost on the end line, right. A tough angle. Um, you know, I think if you look at the, any of the XG models, uh, it was not a very likely goal, but he, he slots at home anyways, unleashes the arrow in the corner by the uh, supporter section, uh, 51st minute, three nil. The party is on, uh, Mike. I mean, I Mike. I, I saw Brian soaked at this point. I, I don't think I, I caught you. Were Were you getting a beer? Like, what is that? What no, caused this? No, no, I was soaked again. No, no. Brian poured it all over me at that time. That that, that goal. Out. Somebody took my hat off and poured water all over me, and I knew who it was right at that moment. So it didn't matter. <laughs> Is, so, that, is, uh, the, is the flag you wear is that water resistant? Is there any sort of oh, yeah. balance? <laughs> no, to I mean be. I just I'll go buy a new one when it gets you know it's stained and stuff like that. It's almost yeah, time to buy a new one. Get that spray with the stain guard. 
Yeah. <laughs> Dickies came out where you could never get a spill on your pants. That's right. Yeah. Just like puddle right up on the, the puddle up on your pocket. I have like three pairs of them because I always be spilling stuff. <laughs> so I, I think in the uh, chaos of just that flurry of of maxi goals there. Um, it we talked about earlier not being able to really take everything in when we're in the stadium, especially when we're on such a high like that. I didn't notice till I watched the replay today that Drew Yusey tweaked his groin again and was down for a second. Not he not on the ground, but he he knelt, he challenged, went in for a challenge, kind of tweaked the groin. He was grabbing at his hamstring first. This was 52nd minute right after that goal. So like Mike, did you notice that in the stadium, or were you like me? Were you no, I just... didn't see that one. Yeah, I didn't see that one at all because I yeah, was definitely it's... concerned about that. Anytime I see that man clinch anything, I'm like, oh crap, there yeah. goes our season. <laughs> yeah, it, I'm becoming more convinced that he's just getting a breath. You think? I am becoming he's doing more that. Shimei Johnson, tying his shoe. I mean, he's a bro. He's a professional. Yeah, you know, he he's been doing <laughs> this for a long time. I I am becoming more convinced, and maybe I'm just telling myself that because when he does go down it's like uh you're right you're just, man. just trying to comfort yourself in that moment it says as i'm saying oh there's it's his torn achilles he's done <laughs> 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 uh just just after that uh mario does pick up a yellow card kind of tossing fagundes to the ground uh on, on the far side of the field from the broadcast camera that was the 57th minute uh and again you talk about waking people up diego with his second assist two minutes after that to Sebastian Driussi, who then uh, I think Mario didn't need a red card to get him off the field because Driussi buried him, took his ankles. That man was left. (laughs) One of my favorite goals of the year, uh, just Driussi turns, stops on a dime, slots at home. I mean, he the whole had build up, the whole buildup. It was the, the tic tac between him yeah, and, and yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was yeah, that, was, that was great. And it, it built up out of the back too. And I think that's something uh that I don't know if it's on the highlights. I think they kind of start it when when yeah, like they started said, from, Mike, right. But when Driussi and, and and Fagu are kind of going back and forth there on the left side, but I think if if anybody goes back and watches the 10 to 15 seconds before that break and that goal, you'll see the system working. They played it out of the back. They had pressure. They broke that line and it turns into a goal. When you get our attacking front, which is one of the best in the league, when you get those guys space on the run, good things happen. Uh, so obviously the, the goal was fantastic, but like, to your point, Mike, the buildup was, was beautiful. And it's exactly what Wolf has been preaching and teaching this club. Um, yes. Right after that, it's kind of white flag. Uh a triple substitution, Chiellini, Apoku, and Franco Escobar in for Mario, Bale, and Palacios. Like I said, <laughs> Mario didn't need the red card. Driussi sent him off by taking his ankles there. Uh, but then <laughs> Chicho Arango scores in the 61st to make it 4-1. Uh, shouts for a, an offensive foul on him, kind of barreling into Ruben Gabriel. Saying, that was heinous. Yeah, I was going to yeah. ask you because you were the one who told me. You were like, he just he crushed Ruben yeah, and I, gets up and slots at home. So I thought when I first saw it, I thought Ruben slid, and then yeah. um, I see it again for the second time, and no, not even remotely. He just gets completely taken out of the play, blindsided. Mm-hmm. It was a blindside shot, and then he's gone, and he's looking for a foul. But, uh, yeah, I don't see – I mean, it would have been great to, you know, clean sheet him, but th- yeah. that was just – I don't see how that wasn't called. I really don't. And Brian, I mean, you can get four one win. I'm not going to you know split hairs, but like shoot again to go back to what Wolf said. If it's a if foul, it's then it's a foul. Mm-hmm. But, like in a, I, in a closer game, that could have been game changing. And then that brings it back to the the quote: "If it's a foul, it's a foul." In in a close game, it was it is it called? Right. You know what I mean? Is is, right. is that the the you know the the one qualifier that changes the situation there? And I think all of us have uh, spoke to how we feel that the ref lost control of the game. Mm-hmm. And I mean, the cue was absolutely rocking. Uh, I I don't have this man's soccer referee reference. I don't know if Los Nerdes got <laughs> that, but. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> it was, it was an electric atmosphere and he definitely uh, lost control of that game. Brian, were your thoughts kind of, were you kind of in lockstep with Ian there? You thought it was a foul on Chicho or was it a play on? Um. Yeah, no, it was it, it, 
it needed some look, man. Um, again, you know, speaking from the point of view of a referee, there is so much going on in the box that you have to keep an eye on, and especially on that side of the box because you don't have the assistant referee as your second set of eyes on that because the side that they were on was the opposite side from the assistant referee. Mm-hmm. Um, so sometimes that assistant referee can can watch a certain spot and and it leaves the the center referee to watch you know what's going on right in front of the goal um but yeah in my opinion chicho lo- lowered his shoulder and his his objective was not to play the ball his objective was to get a player out of the play and you notice that when he got immediately back up and i don't know if you guys saw it on the replay but the before the goal an amazing save by Stuber. yes like, oh yeah nice, bang yeah. And it just happened to fall right back to Chicho. Who I thought he was offside. Was back yeah. up. Yeah. Ruben kept him onside because he got yeah. fouled and pushed down. Yeah, so, yes. But, yeah, so Ruben asking for a foul was absolutely correct. He should have been asking for a foul. Um, but, once again, there's sometimes that they just don't fall your way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and I think, you know uh, – I'll give Chicho credit too because I I really enjoy watching him when he's not playing against. Yeah, oh, yeah. he's one of my favorite MLS players. If he's, he's not playing against he's Austin, yeah. Pretty nice finish by him to it springing back up and and you know the volley. very nice. Um, and and I can say that because there was no more craziness. Four one was the final score, but we did see in the 70th minute the return of Johan Valencia to mm. the field at Q2, which I love to see because I, I, although he hasn't, I don't think, um, you know, kind of lived up to what my expectation uh, of, of him, what we were going to get from him on the field this season when we signed him. Part of that, I think, is Danny Pereira's taken another step this season. We talked a lot about that, or I would say it just kind of as the Austin FC community, we recognized uh, Danny's improvements early in the season. But to be able to have Valencia back in the squad as an option, uh, especially – three games in nine days, you know, right here this week, kind of in the, in the meat of the, the end of the schedule here in the regular season, it's going to be great to have him. He comes on for Danny. Um, Vela comes off for LAFC in the 77th double sub for Austin Felipe and Owen Wolf in for Driussi and Fagu. Uh, and then Caroso, uh, so Manchita comes in, Romagna comes in for Finley and Gabrielson to close it out in the 87th. Ian, Maxi Ruti played 90. How do you feel about that? I know we already touched on, you know, him, you know, what we were talking about the last two weeks with the 60-30 split. But uh, I know I know what that tells me, but what, what did you read from that? He deserved to play that. He played sure. amazing. Um, yeah. Set the tone uh, for us, you know, uh, throughout the match. Um, mm-hmm. I'm glad he played that much. Mm-hmm. Well-deserved. Um, I'm surprised he could – go through all that and now with these upcoming games in that schedule that we have maybe we'll see some more some more action from gta and danny Mm -hmm. um but man hats off to maxi for sure uh stellar maybe the best game i've seen him play yeah and i think one of the best you know i think i believe he's been in the league now 10 years six different teams uh one of if not a contender with with games remaining for one of his best uh, campaigns in his his long, you know, illustrious MLS career. One of um, one of the um, <clears throat> the moments of the match for me was right after Diego sinks the first goal, and Max mm-hmm. just kind of looks at him and just like smiles so yeah. big, He's just like <laughs> you, like you dog, like yeah. you, know, <laughs> you just did that. Um, and yeah, it was great. Uh, he played fantastic, um, and uh, yeah, good for mm-hmm. him. I think Max is a difference maker this season in, in the locker room, in the locker room. Like I the chemistry in the locker room has come from Maxi, from what I've seen. Felipe has brought the mentality of toughness. Maxi has brought the mentality of camaraderie to this locker room to where it's so a great point. type. Right. That's a great point. Okay. And I'm not saying I'm – There's I have never gone on record to be like, oh, we got to get him out. I just was right. a 30 split, Danny. Yeah. I totally you're, agree. You're a Danny. Oh, I agree with yeah. you. I agree with you. Yeah. I 100% <laughs> agree with you still, but – yeah, uh, but what he brings, veteran presence in terms of our culture, in terms of – and I think that's why I was glad that he went mm-hmm. and, uh, after he got fouled and gave him a little something. Because mm-hmm. it's like, no, nah, you're not going to come in here. You guys are in first place. You got all the names. And, I, I look, we got we to gotta talk some more about Gareth Bale. 
Oh yeah. Yeah. We we have have to, absolutely. Bale. Um, yeah, I mean, I didn't even see him play. Did anybody else? I, mean, I, thought, I thought that was Christian Bale. I thought that was, was he, Christian Bale. Did he show up? I didn't, even, I, I didn't even know he was there. We yeah. said Vea too, or, or Vela, and I was just like, yo, wow. That was the first time I heard his yo, name. There was there was a moment um, when I think it was Danny. So, first of all, I think unsung hero of the game for me was Danny Pereira. Um, okay. it, him holding down the midfield, like he was a solid rock in the midfield. Very – few balls were taken away from him. He took away a lot of balls on attack. Mm-hmm. Like, um, but um, there was a moment where he took a ball from Vela and Vela just stopped. He would, in, in that moment, he was done. And I even, the LAFC supporters that were sitting in front of us on the front row, I even grabbed the megaphone. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> hey, Vela just gave up on you guys. Hey, he just, he just gave up, literally. I just saw him give up yeah. on you guys. <laughs> And that's the, I, that, I think that's the difference between, you know, hearkening back to the, you know, MOC's uh, uh, commercial, if you will, where he was like, we don't have show ponies. We have workers uh-huh. uh-huh. um, because we know that everybody on the team has to put in work and, and nobody's above the team mm-hmm. uh, whole, in, as a whole. Um, the other point I was going to make is uh, your statement about uh, Maxi giving Diego a smile. It was funny because his assist to Maxi's sec or first goal, second goal, yeah. um, he was smiling the entire. Like if you look at the replay, uh, he's behind and he's just smiling as Maxi gets through, and he just knows he's like, "Oh, there it is." Awesome. <laughs> it was great. They have I, a very. I mean, they have a fantastic, fantastic relationship. I forget which member of the kind of the Austin FC Twitter community tweeted out that slow motion replay today. Yeah. Um, I assume you saw you saw the same one I did. Yeah. Um, fantastic work there by him. I apologize for not remembering off the top of my head who that was. And I, the best part about that to me, Brian, was he he's smiling as you said. And then I, whenever uh, Hollings had slid in, he got serious for a second because he thought the pass was going to get deflected, <laughs> and he sees it get through and he starts smiling again. So, yeah, that was, <laughs> that was a great catch. Um, the last thing for me on this game, uh, we know MLS does secondary assists, which I'm a big fan of. Uh, Alex Ring was awarded a, an, an assist and is now at 10 goal contributions, which uh, is his career high for a single season in the MLS. Nice. Uh, so, uh, you know, all the, the – Shout out, the, Ken. All the crap we've given him, uh, not just you and I, Ian, uh, I think just kind of the fan base in general, it's it's easy to um, to kind of get on the captain, right? That's that's what the armband is for, right? When things aren't going well, we and can he turn embraces to you. That. What's that? He embraces that. He's not going to be yeah. any sort of person to shy away from some sort of criticism. I don't think that he would attest to being his best over the last sure. couple oh, months yeah, of no. the season. Alex owns up to it when he messes up. Yeah. He knows. Yeah. He knows. Yeah. So shout out Cap. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, sorry to interrupt real quick, but it is Alvaro who gave us that amazing video. There you go. Uh, at, Shout out. Uh, uh, at Ro underscore Dini. So, so go follow Ro Dini for those those slow motion breakdowns of the facial expressions on the, the guys <laughs> assisting our goals. Uh, I mean, just to, to wrap up on Ring there, I just think it shows that he's he's not only doing like there was an effort he made on a break. I think he came from behind on Latif Blessing and poked it away. Uh, in in the first half there, just that that defensive effort we know is always there, but ten goal contributions being his That's career great. high in the MLS. Um, as much as we know his finishing can be up and down, he's still contributing more than he ever has in the MLS, and he's been a a, a MLS stalwart for many years now. So um, just again, like Ian said, shout out to the captain, uh, Mike yeah, Brian. He's not a box score guy. Absolutely. You a know, lot of the really, things he, like, it's good to see that him. for him. Like I'm happy. I'm, I'm very happy about that um, yeah. because he's not a box score guy. And what he brings to our team is just integral to everything mm-hmm. that we do. And I'll, me, I'm done. Go ahead, Mike. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I, I was just going to say for me, it's um, captains are those kinds of people, right? The, the skippers on the field are the guys who are like, I don't need the, the glitz and glamor. I don't need to be, front runner or in everybody's face, but my team is going to know me. My team is like, I can help run this team. And I think Alex plays that to a T and he's, a, he's one of the most amazing uh, skippers, uh, you know, captains. I like that, that skipper. I like that. Yeah. 
Anything else on this game for any of you guys? Are we ready to move on? Yeah, I mean, I mean uh, yeah, go for it, Mike. I, was, oh. I, was, I don't have anything other than the atmosphere at Q2. That was unbelievable. It was unbelievable. That was the best thing I've ever been a part of. So, other than that, like, you could yeah, feel if you haven't it. been to a game, you got to, I mean, like, for those people who haven't been to a game, you just absolutely yeah. have to experience it. Yeah. yeah. I'm bringing my buddy um, for the first time on Wednesday. Speaking nice. of that, it was, uh, my sister in law was there for her first game. She flew in from San Francisco and I was able to get her a ticket. She was like in the 121, I think. So she was okay. two, two sections over from us. So she got the in, experience. In the North, North End. End. Yeah. <laughs> and I guess I'll, I'll say this before we move on to, to our uh, kind of miscellaneous topic here. Uh, shout out to everybody else that was in section 123. I, again, under the leadership of you guys turning around and, <laughs> and keeping everybody into the game. But our section stood for, I think, 85 to 90% yeah. of the section stood the entire 90 I and, told Mike that. I was like, dude, everybody's standing still. I was like, we got everybody to stand for the full game. This is amazing. <laughs> yeah. We have not seen that in 123, I think, since the first three games last year. It was San Jose, Nashville, right, the two draws to start, and then Portland, the first home win. We had that We had that juice in the stands. Everybody was standing the whole game. And then it kind of, of, of waned. I think what we saw there is a playoff atmosphere. I think that's what we're going to see in October when we host that first round game. And and I can't wait for it. And the fact that, Mike, you said that was the best atmosphere at Q2, I do not disagree with you. But it's it's wild to be saying that after what we just did two weeks ago with, with that SKC game. Right, right. right. It's, it's been a fantastic August so far, I think, at the Q. And, and that's what we want to see, right? We we want it to be a fortress. And I think we, we all would agree that we did not deserve to call it a fortress for the majority of this season. No, this ain't no false fortress. But this yeah. is fortress. <laughs> we've got we've got September and then two early October games to to kind of continue this run of form at home. We know we need to be good at home come October uh, for our first playoff run. So before we get into that Portland Timbers preview for Wednesday's match, uh, I have a little little topic here that I wanted to touch on with our guest. Um, and the, the, it's just a simple question. What was the take or opinion that, that you had in the preseason that you think you were most wrong about? It could be something like it, it didn't it didn't happen. It's a negative or it's a positive. Somebody surprised you. I, I'll kick it off. Uh, my take, and, and take he off. does this well because I've said this. I, I, I've been saying this. Like I think when Julio, you know, had that turnover against Minnesota, I turned to and I was like, you know, threw my arms up. Uh, my take was that Kip Keller – would win the starting job next to Ruby, Ruben Gabrielson. Um, and and I'm glad I was wrong because Julio Cascante uh, has been fantastic. And I think he took it personal. Like, obviously, you know, you guys said Alex Ring will own up to mistakes. I think that that goes for a lot of the guys on the team. Julio, I mean, he owned it after that Minnesota game. He He clearly channeled that energy into his effort the other night. And I think you can extrapolate that out to the rest of the season. We know what he does on the offensive end, but defensively, the mistakes stand out to everybody because, of course, they do, right? If they lead to a goal, they lead to something bad, of course. But nobody remembers all the tackles that he makes, all the hustle, hustling back, and, of course, the offensive uh, output that we've seen from him. So I, I will say I would love to see – I know Romagna has been in the team more than Keller, but I would love to see Keller and Romagna get some rotation minutes headed towards the playoffs because, you know, I'll knock on wood here. If we like center back, I think right now outside of fullback uh, with Hector still not back in the team or hasn't gotten back on the field yet. If one of those two guys goes down, Romagna and, and Kip Keller haven't had a lot of minutes this year. So I just think being able to get those guys in a little bit more. I'm not calling for any starts. Um, and I, I, I do think Wolf would, would start Romagna. I think he's shown that if if we were going to rest one of those guys. But I would love to see Kip Keller get some minutes and, and get some experience, not just for this season, but for the seasons to come, right? Because I think we, we all agree that we we see Kip Keller being that starting center back at some point down the road. So I'm I'm happy that I was wrong about it because Julio's been been so good this season and, and I hope he continues to be. So I just want to interject with one point that I think um like you said it's always good to have perspective. Um and I think that those games last year 
Julio is deriving something from them in terms of his play. Like, you know what I mean? Like now we're in second place in the West and, you know, he was out there last season, um, you know, when we were down, down bad. Um, and I think that that is something that we can take away from our first season that man, we have a great fan base. We have a lot of pride um, in our team. And I think Julio represents a lot of that. And I definitely do want to see more kit minutes because I think it is very important for the uh, arc of the team. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, I, I, I think that Julio has been fantastic. And like you said, the glaring mistakes, they do stand out, but uh, yeah, I, I agree with your point there. Well, let's toss it to Mike. Mike, did you have a preseason take that, that you think you were most wrong about? Yeah. I mean, mine's kind of on the plus side, I guess. I mean, I, I, I was reminding myself in on February 26th, I was to, you know, that rainy day, we mm-hmm. came and played Cincinnati, and I was telling you, you know, this is just a kickoff. It's going to be a good year, but this is our second year. It's only our second year. And looking at that and now looking where we are now, I was, I was thinking we would only be fighting for that playoff spot. We'd be at that seventh, eighth position right now trying to push. We're, we're on that final push for that playoff spot. That was my prediction in the beginning of the year. So never expected it blew me away. This year has been fantastic. So, yeah. And I think that for me, the consistent, I think all of us would probably agree with that, right? Like we, we just want to play like Ian and I, part of our, our pregame tradition is we will cheers this season, cheers to the playoffs. And uh, mm. at one point, I think we got a little ahead of ourselves. At one point we did cheers to the supporter shield. Oh, we still and, got and We, we still got the world cup in there at one point. <laughs> Club world cup. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's the consistency staying at the top of the table. I don't think we've dropped below fourth and that was early on fourth in the West, I should say. Um, so yeah, I think uh, that's a really good one. Brian, Brian, what, what do you got? If anything, uh, I might be about to blow you guys' minds here. Okay. Um, so <laughs> I was almost certain that Cecilia Dominguez was going to be the second best player on our team mm-hmm. by the end of the year. Um, I I just I just saw him and Driussi going back and forth in a golden boot race because, mm-hmm. like – if we had a, a, a winger that could take people on one-on-one, yeah. granted he flopped a lot, but <laughs> the guy was good. And like, I think we yeah. saw it, you know, in his, even just the first two games at home, um, him. And I'm, this is also why I'm very excited for Rigoni because he's an even better type of, of that kind of player. Um, and so it's like, what is going to happen once, both wings are occupied by somebody who's not only good, and let me say that, like Ethan Finley was not brought in to be a starter. And mm-hmm. that dude True. has has lit it up. Um, probably one of the best signings, him and Rudy, right? Mm-hmm. Like two of our off-season signings that just made a huge difference. Mm-hmm. Um, and I even remember seeing Ethan Finley's dad uh, outside the night that he had a goal and an assist. Um, oh, yeah, I remember two. that. We were tailgating. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, we his were whole, tailgating. Yeah, his whole family was, yeah. His whole family was walking by, and his dad walks by. I was like, you tell your son he played magnificent tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, thanks, man. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, so my, mine was I thought that – I thought Cecilia was going to be actually so good that we were going to sell him off at the end of the season and make mm. a lot of money mm-hmm. to be able to bring in more people. Um, so yeah, that that was mine. Yeah. How much? How much did the preseason goal against Houston contribute to that idea? Because obviously we had a, a full season of Cecilio out of position most of the time, and he he was our leading scorer last year. Um, to me, when I saw that, that was I think a four nil preseason yeah. win. Uh, and, you know, preseason obviously doesn't mean anything unless you're playing Houston or Dallas, in which case right. I'll count it. It means everything. <laughs> yeah. And and just like the three or four step overs, upper 90 slot, like that's what I I was kind of with you on that, too. Um, and obviously yeah. know everything that's played out. And I think at the end of the day, we're going to be better off for the team is going to be better off for going through all that. We're going to have Ragoni, et cetera. So, yeah. Um, yeah. And. and Diego has I, I I don't think even if Cecilia was playing I don't know if he would be 
on Diego's level right now because he is. I mean, he'd have to be absolutely balling. Is is right. Diego not the All Star snub from the entire uh-huh. league? Right, like oh, 100%. he's the guy that deserves it. Had there. to be one hundred percent. He's leading in the assists right now. Like, yeah, the guy has been an assist leader for what is it like three or four different weeks during throughout this season. Mm-hmm. Um, like, and, did he deserve to start on the All Star team? I mean, I like that's but but he right. deserved to be there. He deserved to represent for exactly. what he's done this season on the All Star team. So Absolutely. I agree. Ian, yeah. your take. My take what, on. From, what from the preseason? Did you have an opinion from the preseason that you look back on now, or is it kind of, or is it kind of like you're in lockstep with Mike? Because I know you you talk about that a lot, having that perspective and thinking back to the beginning of the season, knowing that we were probably just going to be battling for that seven seed. Um, or did you have something else? Yeah, I'm with Mike there. Yeah. Um, I think that I was just trying to keep a level head you know mm-hmm. this mm-hmm. is our we have we've played one full season we're right. here we saw how it went um so yeah i i thought we would be uh you know fighting tooth and nail to get into the playoffs um and to be where we at to be where we are now is just fantastic um and to see how far this team has come is really great and um yeah i'm glad to be wrong Again, one hundred percent. Yeah, that's two times in my life now. <laughs> <laughs> in a week. <laughs> well, let's go ahead and jump into the Portland Timbers preview. Obviously, we know this team Woo! very well. They know yeah, us. I love, I love when Portland they know comes to us. Town. They know us. <laughs> Look, let me let me tell you guys my my first thought when I see that the Portland Timbers are coming to town this week is. Can they sign Steve Clark for a one game contract? Because Steve <laughs> Clark is our best friend. Um, He's only right now. We, we, know, okay. we know him well uh, in 123, right? We, we were talking oh. to him at the Houston game this year where he let three more goals in. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah what, what do you got there, Brian? What is that? This is the is uh, that the sound wave from the first goal scored on Steve Clark. Yo, where'd you get that? So what? it was like during limited yeah, edition, lucky bastard. It was a, it was a limited edition. It was during the uh, Christmas season. If uh-huh. you went into the Verde store at Q2 and got I don't know like two hundred fifty dollars worth of stuff, uh-huh. they gave you the, one of these for free. That's and it was all I got so it framed cool. myself, but yeah, of course, it was, yeah, <laughs> that um, is so cool. So yeah, that's definitely going up on the wall. So dude, that's awesome. It's You're making me want to sign it. You're making me want to play show and tell with these game used balls I got up back here, but I love it. You're yeah. inspiring me. You see, I, I'm currently have paint swatches, so I'm. I'm oh, there, you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> the uh, history from last season, obviously, we all remember the four-one win at home, then a three-one win at home, two and zero there against the Timbers at home, last game of the season, three 0 loss up there at Providence Park, which I think at that time, like we had just come off winning the uh, the last home game against SKC, which was a big upset at that point, I believe, if I recall correctly, Portland needed a, a result in that game against us uh, to make it into the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Clearly they got it, and then we know what happened. They they went on to uh, to the MLS Cup final where they just barely lost in, in what was a classic. Like that, watching really? that final – made me like realize how a, much we needed playoff games in our lives. Yeah. yeah. What a game for the for the entire league. Yeah. That was for yeah. The, yeah. the MLS. So we have seen this team uh this year, third game of the year, all the way back on March twelfth. Uh it was a one nil loss up there in Portland on the Bill to Iloma goal. I believe it was a header potentially off of a free kick, but the, the thing I remember most about that game outside of the score is that there were 30 shots combined between the two teams. This was on a cold, rainy night up there in Portland. 30 shots combined between the two teams, only one on target, obviously, the Tui Loma goal. So it was an ugly, ugly match up there. Uh, I think I certainly expect this to be a much more open game, kind of how we saw the other three or the three matches from last season, how we know Austin likes to play this year um portland right now sitting 28 matches played so we've got a game in hand of them they're 
uh, the eight seed right now. So sitting just behind the LA Galaxy, who have gone up 2 0 now out there against New England. Uh, Portland sitting on 36 points through those 28 games, eight wins, 12 draws, and eight losses. Uh, just a, a, a zero goal differential 45 scored, 45 conceded. I think what stands out to me about this Portland team is we know. Uh, how scrappy they are. We know the history of this franchise. Um, you know, one of the storied clubs in the league and obviously very, very successful. The fact that they have 12 draws, which is the most in the Western Conference, uh, tied for the most in the league with the Columbus crew out there in the East. Uh, a couple goals here or there for Portland, and they could be top three or four in the West, right? Like if uh, things break right for them. So I'm certainly not overlooking this game i'm not writing it off as an austin win or certainly even a tie like this team needs points and i'm a little bit nervous about maybe a letdown because of the emotional high that we're all on i can't imagine what those players are feeling and i'm just hoping that we can can refocus uh and come in and get the job done on wednesday but brian i'll, I'll toss it to you I ask Ian every time when we preview the the upcoming match. Um, do you think that do the, is there any changes you want to see in the eleven in the in the bench? Any changes that you think will happen? You know, I think this is even more fun now. This is our first double game week since we've been doing the pod, so we're gonna see some rotation. Uh, so, how do you see this playing out? Do you think we see a different eleven finally to start this match? We've seen the same eleven for a while now. Yeah, it was like four games in a row. It was yeah. in 11, which is awesome when you have that consistency, when you can have that consistency. Um, I think one of the reasons we saw four games in a row with the same 11 is because we were only having one game a week. So it was very easy for your players to get their rest as well as um, get their minutes. Um, we got to remember that Portland's coming off a big derby when they just beat Seattle at home. Um, so it's not, they're going to be nothing to sleep on. Yeah. We just had a huge win against the number one. So our blood's pumping, but we all know when it's a Derby and you win the Derby, like you're, I don't care what position you're in, your, your blood's pumping and you feel like you can beat the world. Um, so, I mean, that's like the, the rivalry, right? Yeah. Cascadia cup. Yeah. Them and Sounders, right? And it's yeah. Vancouver with that, right? Mm-hmm. Vancouver, yeah, that Vancouver Sanders, it's like the Tejas. Yeah, it's like Copa yeah. Tejas a little bit. Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. All right. That's Copa. All right. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I wouldn't mind seeing um, a little bit of rotation because mm-hmm. we do have to travel to Nashville. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, maybe like a, a, a Wolf or a Finley, um, a Carozo for a Finley. Yeah. Give them a start just to see Manchita. <laughs> Um, I, I feel like if the kid is trying for the world cup, give him a start, like don't Mm. let him continue to come off the bench because give that kid a chance to prove some things to the people that he needs to prove some things to, and it'll make it more likely that he wants to stay with us in six months. Right. I mean, we have the option, but it'll make it more likely that he's like, yeah, I do want to stay here. Um, so I wouldn't mind seeing some switch up on the wing. Um, I think, you know, with our main core guys, we've got to um, we got to keep them kind of in. Uh, I would love for Maxi to get some rest. Uh, I mean, he played that full 90 and played the crap out of it. And one thing I will say, sorry to go back, but we got to appreciate how difficult it is to play a full 90 when you get a yellow card in the 30th. You got to yeah. play two thirds of the game in control, like in complete yeah. control. You can't, you can't mess up anything. And he did that to a T and he did it amazingly. Um, so I, I wouldn't be surprised if there was some rotation. Um, and if there is, I would say wings, give us some rotation on the wings um, and give us, uh, maybe give our, our center backs some, some uh, minutes, you know, like you were saying, yeah. give us, Kip some time this we're in the playoffs right i mean we can yeah. almost officially it's, say it. it's a greater yeah. i than believe that. it's a 99 point like seven percent chance right now yeah. or something unless like we're that. the new york mets we right. uh, <laughs> <laughs> shout out my boy game. jones yeah. man yeah, yeah no, no. <laughs> um so why not give some minutes i know it's still a, a western conference rival or, or just a western conference team um i don't Portland is not a team I want to see 
in the first round of the playoffs. Um, mm-hmm. That being said, I don't want to see LA Galaxy in the first round yeah. of the playoffs. <laughs> yeah. What so, if on Thursday I said that we walked away with four points from a match between – from two matches between LAFC and, and Portland? How would you feel about that? Yeah, totally. I'm okay. Yeah, I feel that. great. I feel Absolutely. good. Yeah. 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 I mean, anytime we go up against, you know, those big heavy hitters um, – and that, like, that's what makes it feel like losses in Minnesota are, like, those are points that we can't get back because it's, like, those are points we should have taken. Mm. And the bonus points of, like, we just beat LAFC, that's a plus three, right? Sure. We should have calculated Minnesota as a three, but, I mean, they've been hot. I can't take any that's not a bad. That's not a bad loss. No, the, the, the two bad losses for us this year are San Jose. Or, I'm sorry, the two non-wins for us this year yeah. are the San Jose games. Two draws. Yeah. Two draws. Oh, they have our number. Yeah, I don't know what it is about We still haven't beat them. Like, well, yeah. it's just it's the style that they play. And mm-hmm. that's what I think, too, like points to why we've beaten L.A. At twice this year. Mm-hmm. Sometimes the matchups are just in your favor. Like how a team plays, the style a team plays – is just either in your favor or not in your favor. And we see that with LAFC is in our favor. San Jose is not in our favor. There's just sometimes those matchups just are, are, are weird and it can be difficult when you play a different style. So, Mike, what about you? What are you looking to see? What do you think we're going to see from the lineup here on Wednesday? Yeah, um, well, my take on Portland this year is they're, they're just a weird team this year. I mean, they're usually a very, very good team, but mm-hmm. it's like you touched on. They have a zero goal differential. They've scored 45, but they've given up 45. I mean, they're in the top 10 in both categories, like goals for and goals against. Like, they're in the top 10 of the league for both of those. And uh, another thing is that they're in the – I think they're third in the league for committed fouls. So they've committed – they're top three in the league for committed fouls. So – that's something Austin needs to capitalize on because we've shown that we can capitalize on these set pieces and direct kicks and things like that. So we definitely need to be looking for that uh, and come up this game. So it's a good point. E, what about you? Are we getting a Danny Hosen start after Maxi played ninety? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's what's uh what's Hector's uh when what, is he? What's his he, timeline? Was he on the bench on on Friday? He was not. No. 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 I want to see. Been, Johan, he's been training. I want to start. I want Valencia, Valencia or Romagna. Valencia. Okay. Uh, Romagna, uh, bruh, we have moved on. <laughs> he's just not good enough. Wolf, Wolf hasn't. He's not good enough. Okay. I don't necessarily disagree. For serious with you. minutes. For serious minutes, I don't sure. see how he could possibly be ahead of Kip. I yeah. I, really I don't do. disagree. Uh, I, I think, want to see Valencia okay. for sure. Um, mm-hmm. If I'm a big wolf, wolf, young wolf, Lobito. Yeah, yeah. I'm a big mm-hmm. supporter. Um, I don't know. I don't. I, it's hard to figure out what Wolf likes to do with these substitutions. I don't know if he's going to give Maxi a much needed break. Mm-hmm. What, he's, what's he? Thirty two. He's, he's like one of the old. I think he's like sixty four in Austin years. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I I, I want to see Johan for sure. I think we need him to get some solid minutes. If we get a lead in the playoffs, um, I would love to be able to fall back onto him and be like, "Yo, bring this home, Felipe. Go fall down twelve times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let, let's go. go. Run through some bite. Yeah, go yeah. run through somebody real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Manchita for sure. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't know how he's going to play this because, like you said, this is – this is. when was the last time we had a two in a week? It's been a while since we had a, a double game week. Um, was Copa Tejas, right? Yeah, I yeah. think it was Copa Tejas. Copa Tejas, okay. Yeah, yeah. Which was a Tuesday, Saturday, I believe. Um, so, yeah, Brian, you were going to say something there when we were discussing Johan Romagna? I was just going to say, I think – looking at it from maybe Josh Wolf's perspective is that Johan Romagna is a physical intimidating presence. Like I don't care who you are. If you put I was, both, looking at, huh? I was looking at our squad and they have him listed 
at like 181. No way. No, no way. No, yeah, that's his thighs. Yeah, 181. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking. I was like, yo, who's our biggest, like, who is our largest human? Ruben has to be our largest I thought largest for sure human. it would be Ruben. But yeah. uh, Romagna's up there. Yeah, Romagna's up And so that's the only re- – and he does have, like, much more on-the-field – experience with Josh Wolf's system. He does. So that's the only reason I would say that um, we don't see Kip before we see Romania. Mm -hmm. And speaking to the point of being able to see people with more minutes, I'm really looking forward to next year when we have the MLS Next Pro Team. Yes. Because we can have some of these guys who we can move down to two for, you know, two or three months yeah. Get them some minutes that they need. Bring them up when when we need them in the playoffs. Um, we'll just have so much more depth. So, looking yeah. forward to that. Very much agree on the next pro team. Um, just real quick, does anybody think Ragoni will play against Portland? That was about to be my question. Uh, because I, I think say put him to the fire, ZG. Make yeah. him go on record. Yeah. yeah. Throw him in there. I, I think I, I would – I will be frustrated if he's not on the bench at the very least. Yeah. I think that we need to get him – like part of integrating somebody into the team is getting them out there on the field in a real game situation. You're not going to have – you're not going to allocate a ton of time as a coach to playing live in practice right now, uh, especially with the the schedule so condensed. So it's not like this dude hasn't played for months. Sao Paulo was in the middle of their season. I know he wasn't playing after we, you know, had the agreement with them to to transfer him, but he's not like he didn't come in out of shape, right? Like this guy doesn't, in my opinion, doesn't need weeks to go out there and play 20 minutes against Portland at the end of the game to get his legs under him a little bit because we're gonna need him. This the schedule gets pretty tough in September, and obviously we know what we think he can contribute to a playoff run. He said it himself, right? When he got here. So um, I would love to see him on the bench and I'm going to go on record and say that he is on the bench uh, on Wednesday. So Ian, what do you, what do you think in the bench starting or, or left off the team again, sitting above us, right behind in those, in those club seats behind <laughs> us in the North. End. What did I say last week? If he doesn't, if he's not uh, rostered for Nashville, we riot on some scale. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. One to one to whatever, one to riot. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, he he said he's not scared of he said he wasn't scared of Los Angeles. Yeah. So the man has no fear. So yeah. let's get him in the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think he'll be rostered for sure. Okay. Um, given the schedule here, mm-hmm. how to play this out, I think we see him. Um, and it's just, <laughs> I'm excited, man. Yeah. I'm just Can't wait. really so excited to see him work with uh diego with seba and see what we have there brian rigoni are we gonna see him on wednesday um i think i think there's probably a really good chance he's he's rostered Mm -hmm. um i would say 50 50 he sees the field um, okay next to zero that he starts Bringing all being realistic is not something that we're a fan of here. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Mike, <laughs> Mike, are you drinking the Kool Aid with us, or are you are cooler heads going to prevail here? Um, I'm actually leaning about? like I think it'll be on the roster for sure, but I'm leaning seventy percent that it'll hit the field. I'm, I'm thinking, I mean, off of this emotional win, I think some of these guys are just tired after this Friday high emotion. I mean, that had to be emotional for those guys, too. I can only imagine. What did these boys do after that game? Yeah, exactly. That's what I want to know. Right. <laughs> Rose Rome at the door. Where, <laughs> yeah. Where did these boys go after that game? Because they went somewhere. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, uh, one thing left to do here with the Portland preview, and that is score predictions. Uh, last week, I believe, Ian, you called you called an Austin FC victory. You said 3-2 over LAFC. I said 2-2. Two, two. Uh, you know, mm. the, little bit more timid there with my prediction portland obviously uh has not been very successful at q2 um but we know uh it's not often that an austin game ends with a, a zero on either side of the scoreboard uh so i'll kick it back to mike first mike your score prediction for wednesday 2-1 austin brian Ooh. 
Oh, that's a good enough. one, brother. Um, you know what? I love my man, Stuve. Um, I'm going to say he gets a clean sheet, and we got nice. a two-nil win. 2-0. Two I like it. E? I want to talk about their roster briefly. Okay. I very, very much like their roster. Okay. I love the Chara brothers. Yeah. I love them. They're yeah. so they remind amazing. me of y'all. You're, so you're the Austin Char, bro. <laughs> <laughs> My new Twitter handle. <laughs> Char, brother, one. <laughs> Five, one, two. Uh, I love Asperia. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, I, I love watching him play. Uh, with that being said, never have I predicted an Austin FC loss. Never will I. Yeah. All right. So don't, you know, As you, can at, me, you can at me at my non-existent Twitter. <laughs> uh, you can at me for Ian. There you go. There you go. Um, they're going to be hungry. They're going to play well. Uh, like I said, I respect their team. I respect their franchise for sure. I think Ragoni gives us a goal, either an assist or a score. Oh, and I think we pull it out three two. All right, three two, a high scoring affair. Second straight three two prediction. It's for you yeah. here on the North End Pod. I'm going to go three one. I okay. think uh, Yaroslav Nizgoda has been hot for them. Uh, another one of their attackers that I'm a fan of. Uh, I agree with you guys. Like, I, I think that Portland is a really fun team to watch because I think fun. they, I think they can win in a variety of ways. They can win a you know drag out slog of a game like we saw them do against Austin earlier this year, and I think they can compete in some some more you know high scoring uh, open affairs hasn't really been the case for them lately the form obviously uh like brian said they just just beat their biggest rival 2-1 the sounders uh there but coming off a 4-1 defeat at the hands of skc we talked about them last week sporting kansas city looking pretty good strung together another victory this weekend 1-0 over san jose uh and and portland also uh lost 3-1 to toronto with these days uh Really, that, that's not a terrible loss <laughs> when you're looking at Toronto and the firepower they have. Brian, let me know. I, I saw you wanted to say something there about Toronto. Oh, no, not Toronto. Okay, um, gotcha. I was going to say something about um, Portland. It's kind of funny that their home record is, uh-huh. is exactly mirrored with their away record. Um, so they actually only have 12 points on the road. I think that really favors us. Uh, they have a 2-6-6 six, and six away record. And they yeah. have a six, six, and two home record. So, so it's like a black mirror. Yeah. So <laughs> I think I think we have a much better opportunity beating them at home than we did beating them uh, up in Portland. So, I mean, That's yeah, a, yeah, I yeah, just I because of great form. It's popping there too, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Timber's army. Yeah. I mean, oh, that's they cut trees and shit. Did you yeah. guys see their TFO? They're making paper. Today? I did not. What was it? Oh my God. Look up their TFO. Uh, the title of it was Little Fish, Little Fish, Let Me In. And it was basically <laughs> a homage to The Shining um, because, like, where they filmed The Shining, I was see at, it now. At a hotel there in the Portland area, um, even though it was, like, set in Colorado. Wait, whoa, whoa. They. Sh- Wait, because I've been to that hotel. I have been to that hotel in Colorado multiple times. Yeah. So the exterior shots of the hotel in the movie The Shining were this, I forget the name of the hotel, but it it was this hotel in their area, in the Portland area. What the fuck is the name of that hotel? The Stanley. The Stanley Hotel in Colorado. That's the the interior shots. That's the interior shots. The exterior shots were of a one in Portland or in the Portland area. No. No, it's the other way around. Is it? Yes. I'm pretty sure. The big white, the big white mansion? No, this was, I mean, the the hotel was huge. Uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. the the Stanley. The exterior. Well, we we can figure this out after the pod. (laughs) It's a whole different podcast. I want to, let me ask Mike this question. Okay. All right. Mike. Okay, so uh, so in Zach and I's world, uh, you know, if somebody if somebody's a gamer, somebody somebody's a basketball player, he's a hooper, you know, what I mean, he shows up to play, he knows how to play the game. What is the term for a soccer player 
who like because the Char brothers are just hoopers. They come out, they're gonna do it. They're gonna play their game every I single mean, time. Overseas, you'd call them footballers. That's what you call them. Okay. Okay. El crack is what they call it in South America. Right. Like, that's that's, that's, that's crack. crack. Drew Ucy's nickname is El Crack. El Crack. Yeah. Like, crack. Yeah. Like you're the best. That's, See, this is this is off. what you know what that is. That's dope. <laughs> <laughs> This is what I think is 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 maybe uh, maybe from my perspective, and I'm biased. Uh, some of the charm of this podcast is is Ian's naivete when it comes to things like that. That if you're in if you're on Twitter every day like the three of us are, uh, you, you, oh, you see know, that type I know of the stuff. term footballers. No, no, oh, <laughs> El, El Crack though. I see that all the time. El Cracko. Yeah. <laughs> El Cracko. I said El Crack. What are you t- Get some headphones, Ian. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys. Uh, I appreciate you. We ran longer than I told you we were going to, but uh, I, so I had good, a blast. Man. Really so appreciate you guys coming on, uh, kind of sharing a little bit of your story with us, popping up about our favorite team. Uh, and I can't wait to see you guys on Wednesday for, for hopefully another three points at the queue. So, uh, Mike, Brian, one last time, let people know where they can find you uh, and, and any last words you may have. Go ahead, Mike. All right, yeah. So, uh, like, once again, you can follow me on Twitter. It's at Verdes Locos. I only talk Austin FC, so you don't have to worry about any politicals, nothing, nothing like that. <laughs> it's only Austin FC. It's no other sport. It's what I talk about. So, yeah, come find me there. Brian? Uh, yeah, uh, you can find me on Twitter at Stonehens22. Um, and I, I talk about a lot of stuff. <laughs> so, uh, mostly it's, <laughs> mostly it's Austin FC. Uh, I'm also a Liverpool fan, so I'll talk Liverpool as well. There you go. English hey, find me if you can. Yeah, okay, I will. <laughs> I will try to find you. <laughs> at E, right? That's that's yeah. Awesome. At E, <laughs> find me if you can. Good luck. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Cool. Well, once again, appreciate you guys for being with us. <laughs> appreciate you. If you have stuck with us through this almost hour and a half long podcast, we very much appreciate you here on the north and double game week for the team it's a double pod week for us we'll be back after the portland game to recap everything that goes on on wednesday to preview this weekend's nashville sc match out there on the road where our guests mike and brian going to be at that game in nashville traveling this weekend so maybe we get a little road report from the brothers out there. for sure are Um, we not going to talk about the post game we can. Oh, I, I will. Okay, we'll slot this in here for a couple minutes because boy, this is more me. <laughs> and you late just night viewers. I mean, it was an awesome experience. You guys got to share. Did we? Okay. Did we share this with you? I I told them that night, and I was talking before you jumped on with them about about how it went. But okay, so if you can stick with us for five more minutes, uh, I got extremely lucky. Apparently, months ago, I put my email in an in Instagram comment for some sort of sweepstakes giveaway. I got an email earlier last week that I had won two VIP tickets, uh, some some cash to use at the uh, stadium, which I think probably equated to like two and a half jellyfish. As or something. That's say, what I was going to say, yeah. But I appreciate it nonetheless. It's it's awesome. We don't drink uh, any fishes over here. But uh, yeah, we don't. Uh, we're the uh, North End. We yeah, got toast. We drink yeah, yeah, we're drinking dose. That's right. We some Mick Ultra, something <laughs> like that. Whatever the cheap stuff is down in the North End. But the yeah. best part about it was uh, that we got a, a little VIP uh, post-game experience. So uh, we were very relieved that the game was not – uh, close at the end because we had to meet uh, down there in the 90th minute to be ready to, to do our little experience thing. So went down there. Uh, shout out to the the uh, VIP rep, or I forget her actual title, but her name was Emma. She was very nice to us, showing us around, took us down to the field club. Uh, we got to watch the team, all the coaches. Claudio Reyna went past us to go into the locker room. Uh Got to take a couple pictures of those guys. We said that was the first time I saw Ragoni in person. He walked yeah. by. Ragoni uh, was there, baby. Manchita flashed us uh, the pearly yeah, whites. The pearly whites. Fantastic yeah, smile on Caroso there. Um, and then uh, John Gallagher and Jared Stroud came out and walked out onto the field with us and sat there and talked for five, six minutes, which was 
those guys were awesome. They were extremely nice to us in a very kind in our post game state. Uh, I think the first thing John Gallagher said to me was, "You guys smell like a frat house." Um, and, <laughs> uh, to which now I wish I had said. Uh, well, then don't score so much. <laughs> then don't lock Gareth Bale up so much. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Did you check Gareth Bale if he was in his back pocket? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I couldn't see uh, if that was the case, but I, I, I think he may have passed him off to Nick Lima as well. All, yeah. Everybody had a turn there on Friday. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we, we, you know, got those guys graciously signed our jerseys. Um, I did. I asked John, I was like, is it bad form to congratulate Jared Stroud on the trade, right? Because reportedly he's he's traded to St. Louis City, uh, but the trade can't happen yet because it's an expansion team. They don't they don't have a roster yet. And he said, "No, man, we're all excited for him. He's he's pumped for the opportunity." So talk to him a little bit about that. We told both of those guys just how grateful we were for all the work they they put in for the team, uh, no matter the role, and, and we'll always remember them as as you know members of that first. Uh, that first season so it was a it was an awesome experience um something that we definitely didn't didn't expect to happen and and we're seriously grateful so i've been rambling about it i could uh, ian anything you wanted to add about that 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 night it was just it was a crazy way to cap off that that fantastic game it was the perfect way to cap off that fantastic game and uh shout out to both those guys yeah uh, for being professionals um really appreciated both of them and their time. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that's not easy. You want to get into the locker room. You want to be with your guys. You want to celebrate yeah. a huge victory um, and to entertain us clowns for a moment uh, yeah. was really great. And um, it was in a wonderful experience all around. Shout out to the club uh, for a fantastic all around experience with that. And um, I was just really grateful to be out there to see that. Um, and Johnny and Stroud were, were wonderful. Yeah. You got your autographs. I did. Jersey, I did. You can retire it. Uh, <laughs> tune in for uh hater take of the week. Oh, Guillermo, yeah. Our who, buddy Guillermo. The one who, who gave us plenty of beer showers. Yeah. Uh, as we walked up to go meet these two, two guys who had just got a gigantic win. Yeah. Um, yeah it was great. Yeah, so uh, I guess we, we have some pictures from that. We can post them on the, the Twitter account um, later this week. I know we're, we're going to get the actual <laughs> pictures. They had a photographer take, like a, a you know, nice camera. I'm so terrified of seeing those pictures, man. <laughs> oh, they're going to be great. You guys are I, yeah, man. Dude, I hope yeah. I have my sunglasses on. Otherwise, my lazy, <laughs> eye, <laughs> my lazy eye will be double lazy. Standing <laughs> next to Johnny. Oh man. Yeah, so that uh another just shout out to those guys and uh yeah, we'll go ahead and close it out. Uh appreciate everybody tuning in once again. Appreciate Mike and Brian. We'll certainly have you guys on again in the future. Uh you know, like I said last time, it's not a podcast unless you say this at some point if you, you know, you like the pod, you can rate, review and subscribe anywhere you get your podcast, Apple, Spotify, Spreaker. We've got a YouTube channel. It's at the North End Pod. It's the same handle on Twitter at the North End Pod. Uh, so any support there, if you want, if you have something to say to Ian, those would be the channels uh, because I, I don't think you're going to find him anywhere else. I think you might have told me this weekend you did a. There's a new self-imposed ban on your Instagram, so I will we'll, yeah. we'll find out what's I, up with that a little I, bit later. <laughs> I DM'd I DM'd LAFC a few times. Oh, okay. So maybe it's not a self-imposed ban. Uh, maybe the maybe the Instagram overlords. Have Yo, bless to say Mark about Zuckerberg that. for his unsend option. <laughs> <laughs> All those messages, but <laughs> they have been deleted. <laughs> Shut the oh, account down. Man. Yeah, if you want to talk to me, please don't. Uh, <laughs> find them at the uh, games. Yeah. Find them. We're in the north end. One twenty three. We're in the north end. One twenty three. Yeah. Best yeah. section in the in the Q two. You'll definitely hear us and see us if you come down to that north end. So, uh, for what feels like the third time, we'll go ahead and sign off here. We'll see you later this week after hopefully another win at the Q for our double podcast week. Until then, this has been the North End Podcast. Good night, everybody. Three, two, one.